today we're going to do a little bit of layout. Uh, I'm going to start cutting out the, uh, the foam pieces that will shape the walls of the camper. So when you go to the home store, you're going to find that the rigid foam sheets come in four foot by eight foot pieces. And if you need bigger than that, you're going to have to glue some pieces together. So that's what I'm doing here. Mixing up some thickened epoxy and um, what I do is I take the two pieces that I need to join, I put tape along the bottom joint there, it acts like a big hinge. That way I can put the glue in there, uh, the epoxy in this case, without it seeping through onto the work surface below and making everything stick. You can use um, different materials to stick these together. I use epoxy just because I'm familiar with it and comfortable with it. Uh, but you can use a lot of different uh, adhesives. At this point, really, you're just sticking them together. The fiberglass is going to give it the strength later, so this is just for assembly. And just like that, that will hold it together. It really doesn't need a clamp or anything. Uh, it's just gonna stay straight. That thickened epoxy will stick everything back together and but tomorrow it'll be ready. So uh, once that's cured, you know, you're onto your layout. So I've, I've got some dimensions here I need to lay out on the sheets, kind of get everything ready. Um, you want this to be pretty darn precise and you want it to mimic both sides because um, you want that shape to be exactly the same on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out one uh, with all the dimensions here and then the other one will get cut just exactly to match. So here, yeah, it's a proud moment. You, you know, you get to this point where it's finally starting to look like something and it's kind of cool. Uh, but then you get to the point where, what's next? I spent a lot of time just doing this. A lot of time, really. You know, you always have the option of just walking away for a while and then uh, coming back later. So uh, I did eventually get back to uh, doing some layout here. So I've got uh, a couple of the port hole windows here. And what I'm doing, um, I thought about making a template to, to cut these out. And it's really, this material is so soft, you don't get any kickback from your router or anything. So I just went for it. Um, everything's going to be kind of plus or minus anyway because you've got this flange to work with on your... Uh, window that will cover up any little imperfections but you know this whole thing is going to get adjusted as you put fiberglass on it you're going to sand this you're going to fine tune a lot of it so just kind of go for it and then uh, trim it up to the line later with the sander if you need to work pretty well
getting those all cut out and fitted was darn satisfying. Uh, but now I'm off to the next phase, which is um, the bottoms of the panels. Uh, Basically, I need a place to, you know, something rigid to attach to the trailer frame. Uh, the foam with the fiberglass just doesn't have enough holding strength for screws or anything like that. So what I'm doing here is I've uh, taken some it's solid PVC trim, house trim basically, uh, but it won't ever rot. It holds the screws pretty well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just using a construction adhesive um, to fasten these to the bottom of the um, all of the panels and those will get wrapped with fiberglass when the panels get done and so it will become one really strong unit but that will give me a, a nice attachment point at the bottoms so I don't have to worry about the camper flying off when I'm pulling it down the road at 95 miles an hour. So along those same lines uh, I needed to have some framework here for the doorway as well. Uh, so I just took some uh, 2x4s and, and made them the right shape and uh, put a little brace across the bottom to keep that whole thing rigid. Um, also for all the attachment points where I'm going to have inside, like uh, where I'm shelving and, and things like that will attach on the frame, I've got to have something again to hold, hold the screws in. So I'm cutting some channels here quarter inch deep, I'm embedding some quarter inch plywood into those, so I'm just gonna epoxy those in so they're flush with the surface. But then once that's fiberglass, that'll give me a good point uh, for holding screws and things, for mounting things on the inside of the camper. So while I was letting that uh, body filler um, cure and get ready, I thought I'd move on to the door. And um, so what, with, with this door, I bought this at a junkyard um, and it just needed to be cut down to the right size. So I just you know, I bought a door that's going to work for me, but I just needed to shorten it. So uh, I just went through and, and just kind of hacked the bottom of it off and then put it all back together again. And it saved me, I don't know, two or three hundred bucks by doing it that way. So here I had this great idea of how to form the curves for the roof. Um, so I, you know, I, I took the foam, just a, a chunk of foam here that I had left over, and I cut some slots in it and I thought, okay, I'll put it over a, a little form radius and I'll fill it up with um, expanding foam. I'll fill all the joints and that will you know, kind of lock everything together to be the right shape. Um, and it was a brilliant idea. Um, and you'll see later that I didn't do it this way. I'll, I'll explain in a minute. So I was getting a lot of squeeze out from the foam and I thought, well, um, maybe uh, put some tape over that joint and just hold that down. I know that's gonna make the foam uh, expand less and, and cure into the joint better. So I thought I'd try that and it, uh, it actually did help quite a bit. But here lies part of the problem. When that foam cures, it expands and it changes the radius of the material. And so you end up with a, a kind of a big gap underneath. Um, it just didn't hold very well. So I knew I'd have to overcome that somehow as I move forward. But I thought, well, okay, let's just see how it will sand out and, and um, you know, power sanding this stuff. It's a little softer than the, um, the, the foam board, um, it, it moves a little bit, but not so much that it's going to cause a problem. So in theory, this, this method does work. If you could hold that radius uh, firm enough, it would work really, really well. But I ended up uh, actually cutting the curves on the inside instead and curving it that way. Um, 
and it just it made it easier in the long run. So my plan for uh, the next video will be to actually get started doing some fiberglassing. You know, now that I've got all the panels cut out, um, we'll be able to actually uh, make a little bit of progress. Fiberglassing doesn't look like much when it's done, but it certainly does change the whole outcome of things. So stay tuned for that. Thanks. Thank you.